Magandang gabi. Welcome to Partners in Law, a program brought to you by the Cebu Lady Lawyers Association, Inc. My name is Attorney Hazel. And I'm Attorney Sheena Megan Tapan. And with us today is a very interesting um, person. Actually, she's one of my favorite resource speakers mm -hmm. on this topic. Super perfect huh? for tonight. And super relevant. She's actually an expert licensed clinical psychologist with over 20 years of um, experience and practice. Uh, she's a professor at the University of San Jose Recoletos and an associate member of the Psychological Association of the Philippines, Dr. Mary June Delgado. Welcome to the show, Doc. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you so me. much. Thank you so much, Doc Mary June, for joining us. The topic for tonight, um, medyo uh, relevant siya for the times because um, we're actually living in a, in a very peculiar scenario um, that most of us probably have never witnessed sure. in their entire life. Yes. And uh, why is it relevant? It's actually a quiet, quiet issue. Uh, most of the people I know or personally have experienced, you know, some aspects of this. And uh, bago ang lahat, of course, uh, let us just acknowledge um, and thank the Cebu Lady Lawyers Association for this time and for having us today. And for your time, the audience, the night, thank you so much for, for tuning in. So, Miss D, so mm. we did some research. According to a study made by the WHO, 24% uh, of the global population, or approximately 450, 450 million yes. people around the globe, are actually suffering from various mental or neurological disorders. Yes. And are actually considered one of the leading causes of disabilities worldwide. Mm -hmm. There is a Pilipinas, or probably there is a Cebu, how would you say the scenario is with respect to mental health? Okay, so actually there is no statistical basis yet for that. Okay, wala pa may study jude na uh, being made, especially uh, with the entrance of the pandemic. But when we speak of mental health awareness, I would say it would be about 50, uh, very, very 50-50%. Uh, 50% 50 knew about it and 50% does not really know about it, although they heard about it. Especially that we do not have, especially here in Cebu, so much activities to disseminate awareness for mental health. So really, you, um, it's all about awareness, no? Yes. Again, it's a quiet uh, subject. Yes. People aren't really you know, comfortable probably talking about, um, and probably because may stigma. Yes. Because, yes. Doc, it, would you agree, Miss D, you know, culturally speaking, you know, it hasn't been really favorable for, you know, people who are undergoing neurological, psychological disorders, especially since subjects see as a comedy shows, yes. you know, the, you know, are, yeah. Comedy, comedy, and, then, and yeah. uh, satire, mm -hmm. and like uh, people use mental illness as a way to prove that when you are doing this, you are mentally ill. So yeah. truly, there is a stigma. Right, and I remember, you know, sometimes when my my um, my kalaro <laughs> back when I was mm. smaller, you know, may threats from their parents na kanang i ka sa mental hospital mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. what he's from the mental hospital sige kukunin ka niya if you don't oh. behave so really culturally speaking you know it has been a stigma yes at the same time i remember before i think i'm ahead of you <laughs> in this world uh, there was this stigma that if you marry if you're going to marry somebody be sure you know the family line no. because mas mayo pagkaliwat ungo kaysa kaliwat buang no so it's always, uh, parents are very much, at the time, culturally, uh, very scared that it might e even become part of the family because, you know, the notion that what will people say, you know, unsay kasultis uban. Right. But in your personal observation, Doc, um, sa times before and sa times now na with social media and everything else, um, would you say na na improvement slight sa receptance when it comes to... Uh, knowing that someone is uh, uh, pinagdadaanan niya yung mental illness? Actually, I would like to say medyo dako, dako na ang change. There's a, a greater change because number one, we have more educated parents who knew that their children or themselves need help. Secondly, uh, the group of psychologists or even psychologists, all of us, are trying also to disseminate, educate people 
not only in schools but in organizations that you should not be afraid when you experience as mental health issues. So, medyo dako na ang changes and the social media, uh, you can actually use it as a very good platform to disseminate more awareness and uh, for people to seek help. Right. So, Doc, let us talk about the Mental Health Act because yes. uh, it's not really that common to a lot of people but the Philippines actually have a mental health act. Yes. And it's called RA number no, no. 11036. It was passed in June 2018. This yes. was um, authored and sponsored by Senator Risa Ontivero, signed into law by the president, our president. president Duterte, sometime in 2018. And now they have come up recently with the IRR or the internal um, implementing rules and regulations yes. for this particular law. Now, the mental health act. So. It was passed in 2018. Probably, you know, um, the goal was to integrate uh, mental health into the country's general health care uh, system. But what was the situation before the Mental Health Act was actually passed? And then what could we expect from after it was passed? Okay, so before it was passed, uh, in, my, in my position as a psychologist, it, it was my observation that in our profession, it's very hard to make people understand that they need us, me, uh, I mean the psychologists, the psychiatrists, the counselors, and other mental health helpers, no workers. Uh, they see it as, uh, as, again, we go back to the stigma, a shame that they, uh, it's their shame if they go through it. Uh, at that time, there were so uh, there were what we call hindrances at the same time, uh, hesitations to see people like us in the helping profession. But later on, because of the Mental Health Act, although it was not quite disseminated so much, uh, schools uh, like universities, other organizations, many organizations, private, have already accepted the idea that uh, people around them need help. That's why after the, after the passing of the bill, uh, does the Psychological Association of the Philippines is also acting out how to truly put into context uh, with our uh, or, uh, members in the organization to reach out to people who do not really understand these things about mental health. Doc, may I ask, ano po ba or unsa maning mental, mental health? health? Okay, just like physical health, uh, it's a combination or the conglomeration of your even physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being. Uh, we have all this in us as components of our functioning. We are supposed to take good care of it the same way as we exercise, we eat well, or we do something with our body. We have to take good care of our capacity to think and capacity to feel towards ourselves and our uh, other people. That's what we call mental health or well-being. And um, why do you think, Doc, um, is there a need to integrate mental health and really define Kay ngano kinanglan pa jud i enumerate tanan na rights of one mental uh, one uh, mental health user or one service user na um, actually what is the person defined here as a uh, service user yes. no technical major technical siya but mm. anyone who avails or is diagnosed or he seeks help for her mental or his mental well uh, mental health and well being is actually called a service user the service under the law. Why is there a need to lay it out? Why is there a need to enumerate their um, obli or rights under right. the law? Actually, because before, when we speak of mental health, it is noted to be something that you cannot see. Unlike when you have physical health, you can see people doing something. Unlike when you have the rights of women, you have to be uh, protected, etc. When we speak of mental health, anybody can can just uh, tell that I have problems deep inside me, even if it may not be. And it's not even covered with insurances. So that's why it has to be laid down that these are the components of what mental health is all about. So that as a person, a service, uh, what we call uh, the taker of the service, we are able to define what we need as people and what do we need what this need has to do with our rights as uh, human beings. So it has to be specified. Right. And um, actually, it's good that uh, since we also have the Magna Carta for Women, yes. um, you know, it's 
it might be common knowledge that these are our rights, but it's better if it's laid out. We mm -hmm. also have the Magna Carta for people with disability. Disability, children's so rights. That's 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 wonderful that actually they have a law, we have a law right now that enumerates the rights of a someone who is undergoing mental, mental health, health disorders or yes. issues. It is very specific no sa atong balaod. Di, it should be. Enumerate it siya maayo para dali ra siya masabtansad sa mga people now. For example, gaya na ako na wala sa medical field and kaning mga terms uh, somehow major technical but uh pamaagi ni doc makasabot ta karon nga unsa ipasabot ani nila yes. yes actually in connection to that uh ingon pod ang balaod ang mental health act na um we have to protect the rights and freedoms of persons with psychiatric, neurologic, and psychosocial health needs. Yes. How do we define those with psychiatric needs, those with neurologic needs, and those who have psychosocial health needs? Yes. Actually, if you look at it in the greater spectrum, they go together. But when we speak of psychiatric needs, we talk about people with mental illnesses who needs... Uh, prescription, pharmacological, uh, the, uh, pharmacological uh, prescription from the uh, psychiatrist because probably a part of the brain is, needs help. You know? The same with neurological problems, but there are neurological problems that are rooted in childhood. Mm -hmm. Some people really have problems with the brain in their development as they grow older. And these are the people who need special help. And some behaviors cannot be accounted uh, to be normal because of this. When we say psychosocial, these are problems or personality problems or people with behavior problems that cannot be accounted with neurologic, organic, or brain problems. So no part of the body is sick, but you know that the behavior is not within the normal range. So sakto ba ko sa pag-think, Doc, na it may be genetic or acquire dysfunction through your environment or physical surroundings? Actually, there are illnesses, or we call it uh, mental and psychological illnesses that can be genetic in nature. There are also some that are actually born out of your influences in socialization during mm -hmm. childhood, how you are actually raised by your family or significant others. And others are acquired, especially if they take medicines that have side effects or they become drug addicts, the use of illegal substance, it can actually uh, alter the way we think and feel about the world and ourselves. Um, Doc, what mental health services are out there currently? I understand that mm -hmm. uh, the law integrated everything and made it accessible, tried to make it, make it accessible to the barangay level up to national level. Mm -hmm. How do you, how, or how are you observing things or at the application of the Mental Health Act here yes. in our country now? Uh, number one, the DOH already had actions to this. In fact, they already have hotline and online services for people with depression, suicidal ideation, and uh, centers were already made up of this. And I think DOH is actively disseminating the awareness. Secondly, mo some hospitals now in the country are also taking uh, initiative of putting up centers not only for psychiatric health, but also for behavior and psychosocial uh, help for patients. Then in our group, the Psychological Association of the Philippines, being member of the, bo uh, the board of directors, we are actually trying to put into uh, new programs that will integrate in not only in schools, in different fields, organizations, that we can actually also work out uh, to disseminate, to make awareness and help people with mental health issues. That's wonderful to yes. find out, Doc uh, June, Miss D. Because um, I, as a as a citizen, you know, of the Philippines and as a resident for a long time, um, I haven't really seen any, you know, um, hotline on TV or whatnot that people can, unlike in the states or in other countries, you know, that they can actually call and access whenever. Yes you know, they need help or they feel like they need, you know, someone to talk to, you know? Actually, yes, there's already that one. And private practitioners also, uh, most of my friends, like here in Cebu, they already have what we call social media 
uh, how do you call it, some programs yes. where you can actually talk to them and ask help from them. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's, that's nice to find out. That's nice to know. Yes. Too. And it's very helpful since everyone is actually almost, all of online. all of us are always <laughs> online, you know? Yes. So it's actually Especially better today. than landline. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, uh, in 2016, am I right, Doc, that there were some issues regarding uh, the receptance of the hotlines? Like, hindi daw siya laging available, tapos uh, medyo yung mga caller uh, hindi satisfied sa service ng nag-respond ng call. Um, so, before uh, Doc Mary Gado answers that, that question, we'll be taking a break. And you're still here with us at Partners in Law, a program brought to you by the Cebu Lady Lawyers Association, Inc. And you're still with me, Attorney Hazel Helmuth and... And Attorney Sheena Megan Tapan. And we're still here with Miss D or Dr. Mary June um, Delgado. And we were talking about uh, the previous services available yes. for mental health users, for service users under the Mental Health Act. And... Um, the hotlines that yes. were the hotline issue that was kind of um, popular back in 2016. Yes. So, you th what could you comment about it, Doc? Actually, last year uh, I, I had a time talking to some people, including people from the DOH, especially here in our region, in our place, in our, I mean in Cebu. They were actually trying to improve it. In fact, at that time, I remember they were. Uh, employing hotline uh, facilitators were not psychology majors mm -hmm. or psychology graduate or licensed. Right now, our government is putting into context of the need for psychologists. That's why uh, right now I think it's not only uh, trained uh, other health workers, but there are already psychology majors and social workers able to help that. Uh, that call for change, that call for problems in the hotline, it does not start well at all. Mm -hmm. But I think right now it's doing better. The problem right now is I don't have the numbers of DOH. We could have recorded it also for this case. But anyway, I recommend you just call DOH. They can help you. And your group? Yes. The uh, Psychological Association of the Philippines. Yeah, especially also our private practitioners here in Cebu. Right. We already have many of them. I think really this is a, a budget issue, right? More more than anything. I yes. mean, if um, like any law, when it's passed, it really needs um, financing. Yes. And it really needs money. So um, I think that uh, explains why there really is a need to um, further develop and further, you know, improve um, when the funding is improved also. Yes. Um, but that's kind of challenging right now, especially during this pandemic when our priorities have been, you know, um, rearranged? Yes. At the same time, I would like to make a comment on this because people thought that if you go to a private practitioner and you ask for help uh, to sit down, do counseling, psychotherapy, they thought it is very expensive. No, it is not. In fact, uh, me and I think most of my colleagues also, we tend to look at uh, an, a, a different side uh, with our oath taking that we serve the country they are people we also give them for free if it is need necessary right that's that's a good um point that you brought about um miss d because uh i think people really feel that it's expensive an, yes. an extra um you know adjustment, adjustment on their finances if they see a psychologist or psychiatrist so it kind of um, it's an internal block Yes. For them, uh, an obstacle to get help. It's always a question like in my cli with my clients. Before they come to me, they really ask, "How much is it?" <laughs> no, because they because they cannot see the delineation between psychiatry and psychology. In psychiatry, because there are medicines to be bought, usually that makes it expensive. No, mas mahal kaya di ba na maregulate? May labda na tong precious tambal, labi na psychotic medicines. But with psychology. There are counseling sessions that if we know that our client cannot really afford to pay it, it's all right. Uh, help is there. Especially current online, you can do video call. Huh? Right, that's right. good to know. Yeah. And Doc, what can you comment about, you know, the, the cultural stigma that we have, especially um, sometimes when uh, people, you know, you're really sad and you think you know, you're undergoing depression, whatever form it is. Yes. Um, 
some parents or some of our friends or family would would you know make really something light out of it you know yes. they, usually you know how Filipinos are kanang okay ra na iinom ra na or what or i katog i katog i kaon ra na so um what do you think should a person who feels really down or you know probably has issues that um he cannot or she cannot um cope with how do you what what can you tell them or what can you um say okay uh, because we come from a very conservative culture and we know that before even probably uh, during the Spanish time when somebody has uh, symptoms of depression, uh, mental issues, they see it as against the family. You become a, a noted outcast, no? And right now, that kind of notion, nadala na nato. When you are a person experiencing depression or you are troubled and you don't know what to do with it and you see that significant people are not taking you seriously, then you take yourself seriously and seek help professionally. And always know that the comments, the, how do you call this one, the impressions of people of you does not matter. What matter is your inner feelings that needs to be held. Dilita dapat magsigunahon na bitawan ng unsan nalai kasutis uban. Ah, wala na. Because kita mga Filipino, we are used to the idea that we always look at the better side of, the, of things. But there are people who cannot do that. They need help. So if you feel that you have that need for help, you can always go to somebody that you trust who will listen to you. No? But if there is no one that person, seek help. And you know, tanaw lang karakaroon sa social media na nai-naka-establish ng mga uh, psychologists and psychiatrists who can help you. So it really starts with the recognition in oneself no, na you need help. Yes. So no other person from no your your person. outside circle or your inner circle even can tell you, hey, you need help. Is yes. that the case? Ma? Because that's an internal journey. Some people are able to make facade of what they feel, but they know something is not right. And they choose, mamili sila kinsa ilang sultian. And in case ikaw ang mapilian, take it seriously. If you cannot help the person, the best thing you can do is listen. And if you cannot really help that way, then it's time to help the person seek professional help. Especially now, Miss D, that a lot of people are under isolation yes. uh, in the pandemic. Yes. A lot of people have, a, especially the seniors and mm. younger children, they have a mandatory stay-at-home order. And um, most, especially, well, it also covers people who have to undergo isolation, yes. quarantines for long periods of time. Um, if you're alone, uh, in a small space, which mm. usually is the case, there is a Pilipinas, there is a Cebu food, because it's expensive to have a nice garden. Nice it's a you know <laughs> that you can you go out to see the sunshine. Mm. But for other people, most people in the Philippines, atong um, country, there is lack access ana. So yes. if you are enclosed in a space with nothing for fourteen days or more straight, what tips could you uh, you know impart or share with our um? with our uh, fellow people. Okay, so uh, actually because I already had dealt with people who had been quarantined, no? And I always ask them, do you have your cell phone with you? Or do you have a gadget? These are the things that you can use now to make contacts with people outside, no? From time to time, let's say for 14 days, make sure that you're able to talk to at least two to three persons in a day using your cell phone. Anyway, you have the messenger, it does not make you pay anything. Or look at the happy, positive things over the internet. It enlightens our feeling. So that's all you can do during the quarantine. At the same time, in a very small space that you are there, do not, use, do not think of that as a cell. You should look at it as a way to help yourself so later on you will not be putting others in danger. No? It's not a cell. It's a place to let you know that you need help, and right now you are being helped. Right. Yeah, the internet really has, you know, bridged a lot of problems yes. and have uh, solved a lot of things, you know, with regards to mental health. But uh, I also acknowledge that it's also a source of 
mental health issues, yes. right? Because you know the you can see other people who seemed very happy or seems yes. very happy, Good post positive. super positive things, super nice things on Instagram, and then you 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 wallow into self pity yes. sometimes. Because why can't I? Ngano siya na ama in ano? Ngano ako wala man? Actually, most of the features in the internet, especially with the social media, no. Uh, it perpetuates, as my observation, no? it perpetuates the culture of envy. No? People do not tell you truthfully what, they, what happens to their lives. Nobody will like to feature, although probably there are less of them, feature negative things about themselves. It will always be happy relationship, happy life, beautiful house. No? So, monang, choose what you see and what you want to look at the in the social media pilia and they are parts of the social media that are actually number one biblical others prayerful other uh, inculcating positivism those are the things that you can actually uh, go into no like for example in my case i usually open Bo brother boss sanchez uh and no so you can do that yeah, you really have to filter no, and control your time on mm. social media because sometimes if you just spend too much time on it that's where the issue issues is. Come you know, in. Yeah, that's where the issues come in. Um, Doc, let's go to um, services again. Yes. Uh, because um, we're very concerned about this law because and its effects. Because prior to the Mental Health Act, um, there's a limit on field health coverage yes. for service users. And it's actually predicated on uh, an event that has to be caused by an extreme or acute episode Episodes. of a mental or behavior disorders. Is it different now with the Mental Health Act? Yes. Uh, actually, although kaming mga psychologists limited mang give me some psychotherapeutic activities lang. Unlike psychiatrists, they have uh, pharmacology they can prescribe. no? But in the sense, when we diagnose clinical issues, we can actually make this to help the person apply for the coverage from the field health. Mm -hmm. I already have done that and so far it should not only be a one standing uh, assessment with uh, the person. There has to be serious also of assessment to know really what the disorder is or what the mental issue is. So it can be a coverage or I, I mean it can be a, a combination of um, you know you have you, you're undergoing something mm. you have to uh, get a diagnosis yes. before you get covered. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's for field health. Yes. Um, for mental health services at the community level, um, right now, I know you mentioned this earlier, but right now here in Cebu, if they go to their barangay health center, would they be able to also get mental health services there for free? I don't like to say... I have known this much, but uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned, not not so much. Uh, I have only, uh, let's say, last month. In fact, my training with the gover uh, barangay was even in Lapu-Lapu. It was with the youth. Mm -hmm. No, very few barangays uh, groups in the barangays are taking this seriously. And in fact, uh, I, I told one of the uh, officers of that barangay. Why don't you try to tell other uh, organizations in your other barangays in Lapu-Lapu or in Cebu City to make, make use of the talents of our psychologists, not only myself but other psychologists, to give awareness and to seek uh, training how to deal with mental health issues within the barangay before a professional is called. No, namangite first aid dapat from the barangay. Right. And uh, our viewers should know, actually, na under the law, the Mental Health Act, na ay mga penalties mm. for LGUs, for uh, people who um, act contrary or contrario diri sa Mental Health Act. Yes. Because actually, the LGU and schools and workplaces are mandated to have their own mental health programs in place in their own barangay, yes. city, province in their schools whether it's public or private and in workplaces yes so everybody should know that you know it's a responsibility and an obligation on the biggest obligation would be on the local, local government, government units really to focus 
and allocate funds for mental health services for the people, especially now, I think. Especially during this time of the pandemic. Yes, yes. We're, we're um, experiencing longer isolations, longer quarantines. People are limited in, in, in area. We can't really go and visit our families in Christmas. Yes. So that's, that's one thing that, you know, would um, affect uh, people or, or in the communities. So, Miss Mary June, Miss D, um, what would be your um, opinion or advice on um, stakeholders or particularly implementers of uh, the Mental Health Act? What should we improve on PA? Yes, um, I understand that we have problems with the budget. Uh, you can always ask uh, uh, the practitioners, no, like me, to do something to help. Anyway. Uh, it will not take a lot so much of money. Secondly, uh, be aware of what the mental health uh, law really provides for because it's for everybody's uh, well-being. And thirdly, make it an action for everybody that uh, this is necessary, this is not a stigma anymore, we all need it. Everybody should feel the need nga naag yu kinanglan sa atong mga areas, like what you said, attorney, that the LGU should actually uh, initiate programs to train people how to deal with peop, uh, with uh, members in the community with mental health issues. Yes. Um, Attorney Sheena, you want to add on to that? Pero, ang sa kong pananaw, no, important kayo ang partnership with this, the call out to uh, uh, sa mga schools, like, giingon gid sa balaod na it's calling to DepEd and CHED na i-implement or i-integrate ang mental health uh, awareness sa uh, academe or sa curriculum. So, um, so Dok, sa imong na-notice, uh, asa ni nga part sa education or sa curriculum so, sa ka school na integrate? Okay, so actually, good for private schools na naman sila ilang counselors, guidance officers, and even psychologists like mine na nagigit mga program. With the deep ed, actually being uh, the member of the board, I remember a few months ago or a month ago, uh, we already have talked a partnership with deep ed, with mm -hmm. this, no, to in, in put into the curriculum uh, certain programs for mental health para sa mga bata, and uh, we don't know asa nila ibutang, but we always know na amantay kita wago homeroom, mm -hmm. di ba? Homeroom subjects. That's the time that maso dito ang mga topics, mga trainings, how to deal with mental health issues. And teachers with uh, handling homeroom advisor should be also be given training for this. And again, I also emphasize what you said, the turning, uh, may yud na partnership no, from the practitioners of the psychology and psychiatry field with the government. That's really good to know yes. no, na implement it siya. But um, ayaw mo biya, kaya napatay matunan nga daghan sa kaninga show. Thank you. And now we're back again with Miss D or Dr. Mary June Delgado, our expert clinical psychologist, uh, our guest for this evening. Naagi hapon mo diri sa Partners in Law, a program brought to you by the CELIA or the Cebu Lady Lawyers Association. I am I am still here, Hazel, Attorney Hazel Helmuth with Attorney Sheena Gintapan. Okay, so we are down to our um, last few minutes of the show. And uh, I think it's also important to talk about this in relation to our drug problem. Yes. Um, I understand that there is a balaod sa Mental Health Act. We There are provisions for um, drug rehabilitation. Yes. Um, what do you think about uh, drug addicts and and people who have addictions, whether it's, you know, drug addiction, whether it's um, nicotine, alcohol addiction. Whatever form. Yeah. Um, especially drug addicts, are they suffering from mental health issues? Of, obviously. Uh, a person who has a very good way of coping with life's problems, they get more resort into drug addiction. Uh, many people resort to drug abuse because they cannot anymore uh, cope up with unsay lang mga gibati, sa ilang mga problema sa kinabuhi, common yun na. Very less na kayo ng idea nga, ka nang curious ka, kayo take ka, no? Uh, mas daghan yun tong issues about uh, coping with the problem using drugs. So these people need help, no? That's why uh, 
psychologists now are also certifying themselves to be uh, help, helpers for drug uh, addicts because these people needs are people with special needs in, te in terms of mental health. Okay, aside from taking the drug issue sa ilang body, sa ilang needs, sa addiction, they also need to be uh, guided or even to be helped with what really is the first issue in any way before na drugs. Dubli mang kunay lang issue, ang problema o ang drug itself. So duha ang imo, no? You will have to shoot uh, two birds with one stone ana. Mm -hmm. And for the information of our viewers and listeners also, um, whenever there are drug cases in court, mm -hmm. um, hindi naman po yan diretso okay ipakulong trial no. and then kulong oh. hindi po. Oh, yes, some of them are actually inside serving mm -hmm. um you know, they have to be detained because um violations of the drug law is actually um not available po generally and uh, nandun po sila para mag-serve ng other sentences. sentences. Sanga sanga po yung mga kaso nila but for cases when you know um first time offender mm. hindi naman po siya nagdi-distribute ng mm. drugs hindi siya you know hindi just siya, taking lang. Yes, oo, user lang po taking drugs um nirerekomenda po ng courts ng judges na mag-undergo po talaga ng mandatory drug rehabilitation yes. under this law so that's very commendable for our our justice system also they really check and have tests weekly or if not twice a week daily mm. tests I daily believe. tests at the same mm -hmm. time uh most people who i, I already have clients uh, who talk about this no mm -hmm. Although I'm not yet certified for drug uh, drug related issues, I actually deal with the non drug issue okay. on the person. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I think if I may add attorney, it's because the law looks at those uh, using drugs no as victims. Yes. Not as uh, violators of the said law. Mm -hmm. And and I'm happy, you know, that we're taking a different approach also yes. to it that uh, drug addicts have mental health problems that yes. have to be addressed. It is recognized na talaga. Yes. That's oh, true. Oh. Well, we have a lot of work dealing with the, you know, <laughs> talagang recognizing the issue that this is a health matter more than anything, a mental health matter, rather than really, a, you know, yes. a, a crime purely per se. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of other aspects to it like poverty, lack of education. Sanga sanga eh, no? Konektado lahat ng aspects. Hindi lang siya basta, okay, this is a drug addict, let's deal with it. No? It's, there's a lot of components with it actually. Very sensitive topic but, you know, something we really have to face because it's it's a reality. It's reality. It's, yes, and it's everywhere. Now, um, Doc, Miss D, let's talk about, you know, suicide prevention. Yes. Um, I don't know the figures right now. I don't know statistics. But, um, of course, with the heightened uh, quarantine, heightened limitations, restrictions on travel, heightened uh, populations of people mm -hmm. experiencing really deep mental health issues, I would think that there had been a surge worldwide. It's increasing, really. Of suicide yes. rates, no? What can you say about this, Miss D? Okay, uh, with the pandemic, uh, I would say the rate of suicide, not only in our country but worldwide, really increased, no? Locally, uh, like in my own practice uh, during the pandemic, I already had clients talk, called for me, video con families uh, asking help for people who were talking about suicide already. So, my take on this is that uh, do not be afraid to tell somebody that somebody has a suicidal ideation in the family. Or if you are the person with a suicidal ideation, please seek somebody you can confide the problem with. Nga naaka ini, di ni mo ma-prevent ka nung nengon ini ka. So that that person will be the one to seek help for you if you don't know where to go. Ayaw yung kao kung naaka ini nga mga hinahuna, no? Kay ang tao na amang yun ni nato nga usay mawad antas uh, meaning sa atong kinabuhi tungo sa atong mga problema. You are not alone at all. Ano nga experience? Natatanan. Although dilita na nagunahon ng suicide, pero kung ikaw nagunahon na anak, pangitag tabang within the family. If wala sa family, with your friends, and friends should seek help you, uh, professional help. And I also tell, would like to tell the family, ayo don't take it as a joke when somebody makes a joke na ah, may pag mag-suicide ko. No. Once na sugod na na niyang sulti o nahunahunaan, kuyaw na ng buhaton. So, 
it's time to sit down together and talk about it nga no man nga no makaingon man ka nga suicide na lang ni nato tanan no nya kung di gud madas sa family again seek help na ara gud me mga psychologists mga counselors sa corner sa inyong mga lugar narami sa social media also sometimes miss d no na they really sometimes these people uh dinadaan sa joke yes Oo. and so, in fact people thought now when you make a joke and you, you start talking about suicide you are seeking attention but that's the there are many ways to seek attention ang suicide dili na siya seeking attention and if it is really seeking attention for what reason man nangayo siya ng attention there must be a problem really mm -hmm. pero usually doc dili man na dali dali nga mo open up ang the person suffering from mental illness or na suicide ideation. Yes. So, as a friend or someone in the community, what should we look out for na, uy, kanisha basin, na ni siya giyagihan nga, oh. di na niya kaya. What hmm. should we look out for? You know what? There's so many myths nga. How to identify a person with suicidal ideation. Karon daga na kay malibog na ka sa signs. Kay, like for example, mga batan on, happy kay diri, suddenly, nagbigti. Sa kuyo-kuyo kanang barkada, nagbigti. Whether na ay signs or not, in the family, mas maayog yun nga, open ang communication. No? Na ang family system ka nang itawag na mong expressed emotion in the family nga. Gusto rin na gay mga anak, wa lang. They are not given the attention, they are not given the listening ear. No? Mo na atus uban. May, good if they have friends who will listen to them. No? And mind you, People who have suicidal ideation or are depressed, they don't even trust their families about it. Because ang ilang mga feeling, my family knew me, ibaliwala lang ko ini. Na may tendency, mga ganyan, drama-drama ang ugadiha. Oh, di ba? Sa family. So, if you cannot do that in your family, seek a confidant, a friend. And if you are the confidant, niya, di nini mo kaya nga problem sa imong friend, that's the time I said, seek somebody professionally. I already had that nga, ang ni-recommend sa naay depression or naay suicidal was a family friend. Kaya dito ni Sultan niya kaya compared sa iyang parents. So, it's everybody's uh, what we call responsibility. So, if you want to know unsay symptoms, no? Lisod na kayo ni identify ang symptoms. Pero once ang person may ngon siyang nag-uul siya, naglibog siya, kana mga statements, that's already alarming. Mas maayog sit down and istoryahan. Dili kayo nun, ah, wara na, mawara na. Don't do it, no? Uh, take it seriously. So, that would be for young adults and adults in yes. general. Let's go naman, Doc, to children. Yes. I know children also are capable of trauma. Yes. And especially now that they can't, suddenly they can't go out to park, suddenly yes. they can't do what they used to do before. Yes. They can't go out to the malls. Kay dili pa pwede ang 15 and below. Mm. They cannot go to school. They cannot meet their friends in school. They're learning differently in, in Zoom or in other platforms. Ah, yes. Um, what can you tell or advise both children and parents. Uh, parents on how to deal with this scenario? I'm also a parent. Uh, my daughter is 10 years old. There was a time also during the online class she spoke to me and told me nga kapuya ining online class me oy i cannot see my friends i miss my classmates so actually when you are a parent uh, it does not mean sige na lang kaglingko diha tanaw si mong ay mong anak give your daughter at or sons daughters and sons the chance to be productive away from the computer let me the computer only for classroom mm -hmm. I also encourage my daughter to create a video chat with people kanang iya mga classmates ka close niya. Mm -hmm. I monitor kinsa ni nga mga names. Yeah. She all uh, let the, the children speak to their classmates away from the classroom. Mm -hmm. Kada bang sila lang, say mag game sila or games with the uh, uh, friends that they know. But be sure you know the game, no? At home when you have young kids, do not spare them from doing something. Sugo so, ah uh, Katoni sila og habit nga not at uh, this time in the room, in the house but outside the house. Nanad bang gud ato mga anak nga kung way buhat mula ka dayon, manglaag dayon at to small, no? Moingon ba dayon mingaw na misa mall, no? And number, uh, mostly uh, importantly explain sa bata why they cannot go out, especially about the pandemic, no? Mas ang bata when you speak to them well, they will also listen well. 
lisod nang sige ag singka nga pag ayo nga og pagbuot ayo pag adto no ina bata nga mag precaution lang ta kay igmugawas conducive kay mga bata matakdan no young children can listen then lastly always stay with them on those moments na notice ninyo nga na hilom sit beside the child and talk naon sa man ka unsa day naon sa day i tell you ang mga bata mo open good no not only from my own experience with my daughter but also for my friends i ask them ah unsa buhaton ninyo kung mahilom na inyong mga anak ang usa gyud siya i sit down beside my daughter and eventually mustorya ra gyud siya no ya kana you you try to build activities in the family kana mag sana gitawag dilang mag marathon og movie kagabi or in the morning yeah, ana do things together para mawa sa bata ang iyang kalaay yeah we're actually experiencing um cabin fever yes. especially no um the start pa yeah the beginning of the pandemic the first three months three you months. know we're really stuck with nothing to do we have a three year old at home na kanang ganahan jud mo gawas and ganahan jud makig play with yes. his friends but it's really difficult no you really have to find activities and ways to like um bond together at home and adjust with school and all of those things so with the advent of media anyway and the internet it's it's easier to do but you know it's kind of more difficult if you don't have access to internet if yes. there's no um there's no uh signal or wala talagang gadget Um, dito na papasok yung talagang support of the entire family. family. Yes. Um, so, we are down to our last few minutes of the show. And we would like to do a little summary no, of what we've talked about uh, with Miss Mary June Delgado, Dr. Mary June Delgado. So, in the first half, we talked about um, the situation of the Philippines. Before. on mental health before the law was enacted yes. and then we talked about what the law was what it provides the mental health act in the philippines and dr mary june also gave a few tips um for all of us whether we're um undergoing mental health disorders or illnesses or not or how to deal with friends or family who are and how basically to keep a healthy mental health and well-being especially during the pandemic yes. so any uh, we have at least five minutes not mm. to talk about what else or what can you ultimately say to our viewers for, with regards to mental health okay uh, to keep up with your well-being number one uh, always be able to see positive things or positive side of everything and positive things with people Second, I all, uh, as a psychologist, I always believe that if you help other people in the, in the little way you can, it actually gives you positive feelings, especially with this pandemic. And lastly, do not be afraid with the pandemic. Uh, we have started to learn naman, to be attuned of doing things with the pandemic, in social distancing, using our face shield, our face mask. If we are actually attuned to it, we are protecting ourselves and the people we love. Kanak good, no? And uh, do not be afraid with the pandemic. The world, uh, human beings are adjustable people, and we can cope with it. And always know that there are professionals who can help you. We are all here for you. We can do this together. Yes. Before. Yes. So, uh, thank you so much, Doc Mary Jo. Thank, thank you, you also so much. And for inviting me here. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you to all our viewers for tonight. Salamat kaayo sa pagtutok na mo diri. Uh, don't forget also to please subscribe to our Celia YouTube channel. It's called Partners in Law. And just click subscribe and like and share also if you want. Um, para at least ma-disseminate pa natin. We can help more people yes. through more people um, subscribing to the channel. Partners in Law po. Salamat sobra. Thank you so much for being with us. Diri sa Cebu Lady Lawyers Association program. It's called Partners in Law. With me, Attorney Hazel Helmuth Vega and Attorney Sheena Gintapan over here. Let's congratulate her. She just passed the bar. Yay! Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. And Welcome she's here to the now club. sharing her information, <laughs> her knowledge. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po. Maayong gabi. And amping tangtanan.